Hi, this is Melody Fletcher from Deliberate Receiving, where I explain the Law of Attraction in a no-nonsense, pragmatic, and actionable way. Today's video is another response to a reader question. Cheryl wants to know, if you can't create in somebody else's reality, how can negative thoughts from others hinder you attracting your goal? For example, you don't want to share your goal of a new business with people who don't believe in that goal, as the negative energy of theirs could delay it. Or if a boy and a girl become attracted to each other and the girl's jealous sister who lives in the same house wants him for herself and starts fixating on the guy and sending negative vibrations, can that hinder the boy and the girl from getting together? Will they pick up on the negative vibe? What she's asking essentially is, can the negative energy from one person, the negative vibration they have, affect you? And the answer is yes. but and it's a big but, only if you allow it. Now what do I mean by that? Nobody can create in your reality and nobody can affect your vibration without you allowing it. Now you don't have to do that consciously because otherwise obviously it would never happen. But you can do it passively. If all you're doing is reacting to what's going on around you, so basically things happen around you that are sort of bad and you get in a bad mood and good things happen around you and yay, you're in a good mood. If you're just reacting to what's going on around you and you're not deliberately choosing to think or feel a certain way, then your vibration isn't very stable and it can be affected by that of others without you even knowing about it. If you've ever been in a good mood and you're walking around, maybe you walk into work and then your colleague comes along and starts to complain and starts to bitch and starts to talk about how horrible everything is and before you know it, you're sitting there with them talking about how horrible everything is and you're complaining yourself and suddenly you're in a horrible mood. It just feels really bad. Well, what happened is that your non-stable vibration got affected by his lower vibration and slid down. Let me give you a beautiful metaphor for what just happened. So you're walking along and you're all happy and feeling good and you come across your colleague who is stuck in a pit of sewage. And it is horrible and it is nasty and it is stinky and he's, he's suffering. He's complaining about how horrible it is. And then he reaches out to you and says, come on in. Come on into my pit of despair with me. It sucks in here, but come on in because I will be so much happier if I have somebody to suffer with. And what do you do? You say, okay, and then you jump in and then you blame your colleague. You say, this is your fault. You put me in a bad mood. You complained until I started to complain too and now I'm in a bad mood because of you. Well, no, you jumped in of your own accord. He cannot drag you in. All he can do is call you in and you have to jump in. So there you are in his pit of despair with him and now neither one of you is happy. What you wanna do, basically, is refuse to jump into that pit of sewage with your friend. Stand outside it and say, come on out. You can call him out. Come on out, if you wanna to talk to me, you have to come over here because I refuse to jump into that pit of sewage with you. No thank you, nothing is worth feeling like that. I will stay here in my good feeling place and you can come on out or not, it's your choice, but if you wanna to talk to me, you have to come on out here where I am. What does that mean in real world terms? Well, let's use the business example again. You have this amazing business idea. Your intuition is telling you it's the next million dollar idea and bells and whistles are going off all over the place. And then you make the mistake of telling your well-intentioned but somewhat misguided friend about it who in his wonderful intentions and well-meaningness starts to tell you why it's not gonna work and all the reasons why it's not going to work. The economy and maybe you know entrepreneurialism doesn't run in your family and what skills do you really have for running a business? It's better just to stay in safety and security and staying employee. Even if you're unhappy, it doesn't really matter. And all of these BS reasons and he starts to sort of spew his sewage all over you. Now, in this case, you have two choices. Again, you can jump into the pit of sewage with him and you can start to think those thoughts 
those horrible thoughts about how maybe you're not qualified, maybe you totally will fail. Or you can decide to stay in your good feeling place. Well, how do you do that? Well, number one, before you do anything else, you decide to stay in a good feeling place. You decide to to control your thoughts on this subject and to think only thoughts that feel good and not to allow what he's talking about to affect you. And if that means walking away from him, then that's what it means. Now, if you have a subject that isn't really, uh, doesn't have a lot of resistance in it, doesn't have a lot of fears or negative beliefs associated with it, then just deciding that you're going to feel good is enough. It's going to stabilize your vibration right there. But if you do have some underlying fears and negative beliefs, then that may not be enough. And what will happen then is your friend will start to talk and it'll trigger fear, let's say, for example, a fear of failure. You have a fear that maybe you're not good enough to run your own business and he's talking about it and it starts to trigger this energy that's already there. So there's some momentum already going and he's just feeding into that. And what happens then is you start to slide into the pit of sewage and there's nothing you can do. The momentum's already going, the energy's there and you're sliding in even though you don't want to. Now, this is not the time to start doing work. This is not the time to start trying to release uh, negative beliefs. What you want to do before you do anything else is get out of the pit. And you don't want to do it on the subject that got you in. Why? Because that would be, in this wonderful, beautiful, lovely smelling metaphor, would be like you trying to just leap out of this pit of sewage. You have nothing to hold on to. You have no boulders, no ropes, nothing to get a foothold on. You're just going to have to try to sort of jump out. It doesn't really work. You need something to hold on to, and you can get that by switching subjects to something, anything, that already feels better. So you grab on to the higher vibration of a different subject, and you pull yourself out of the pit that way. You start to feel better by thinking thoughts that already feel good on a completely different subject. And you do that until you well and truly feel better. So you've climbed out of the pit, you've moved away, you've cleaned yourself off, you're smelling good again, and now you can turn around and you can look at the situation, you can say, what was it that made me slide into that pit? What got me, what thought was it that got me? And then you can start to evaluate and find the thought and start to release that fear. And in essence, what you're doing when you're releasing a feel or, or fear or releasing a negative belief is you are finding a different perspective, a different way to look at the situation that feels better and you consciously choose to think that new, better feeling thought over and over and over and over again. You make that choice over and over again until that becomes your default reaction. And you keep doing that until you've worked yourself up to a thought that feels truly good. And you've stabilized yourself when that becomes your default reaction. So what would that look like? Well, you're telling your friend about your amazing business idea and he starts to talk about why it's not going to work. But instead of you listening to him, you either aren't affected at all by what he's saying, in which case you're like, okay, that's, that's great, fine, or you decide, mm, this what he's saying doesn't feel that good to me, and then you tell him, listen, I do really appreciate your point of view and I really appreciate what you're trying to do, but right this second I just feel so good about this idea and I just really want to keep talking about how fantastic it is. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then you either walk away or you engage him in that conversation. And if he's anywhere near you vibrationally, he may raise up to meet you, which means that you'll have a fantastic positive conversation. Or if he's not able to do that, if he can't climb out of his pit of sewage, then you need to let him move away. The law of attraction cannot keep you together if you are not a vibrational match to each other. And if you refuse to step into his pit and he doesn't want to come out of his pit, you're not going to be able to have that conversation. So you have two choices. Allow him to gravitate out. He might come and join you later. It really is his choice. Or you can feel sorry for your friend and step into his pit of despair with him. Why would you do that, though? But what about the example of the boy and the girl and the jealous sister? This really is exactly the same situation. It's only made more difficult by the fact that we're talking about family because nobody 
can push your buttons or trigger your fears and negative beliefs the way that your family can. So this girl really has her work cut out for her. But the fact remains, if she can control her thoughts, control her mood, and control her vibration, whatever her sister does or thinks will have absolutely no effect. So her sister is standing in front of her cauldron every night and sending horrible vibes and you know making passive aggressive comments at dinner and you know making leering uh, uh, gestures towards the boyfriend whatever she's doing and the girl has two choices now she can be affected by that vibration which means that uh, fears will come up like I'm not good enough maybe he'll leave me anyway or maybe she'll be successful and she'll steal him away from me all these horrible feeling thoughts might come up and if she focuses on those and continues to think them then probably what's going to happen is she is going to become very defensive around her boyfriend and very controlling and she's going to turn into a psycho bitch and he's going to leave her you know or she can decide to find every time she gets into that pit and she finds herself going a little bit crazy pull herself out of the pit look at what the, what what thought it was that pulled her into the pit clean that up change the perspective choose that new perspective over and over and over again until the point that whatever her sister says or does does not get a rise out of her doesn't affect her because she doesn't for a second believe that her sister is actually a threat that what her sister is saying is actually true or that she can have any possible effect on the situation. The relationship is between her and her boyfriend and that's it. She's controlling her own vibration and if she can get truly stable in that vibration then the law of attraction will not be able to bring her and her sister together when her sister is acting like a jealous cow. It will not be able to happen. But first, the girl has to change her vibration, and then circumstances will change to match that vibration. I really hope that this video has answered all of your questions, Cheryl. If not, mail me and I will continue to write. I would like to thank everybody for watching this vlog. If you have a question, please contact me through my site. I will definitely answer you either in an email or via a blog or a video. Huge hugs to everybody out in cyberspace, and I will see you next time.